The city of Babylon was near the banks of the Euphrates River, a region that today is part of Iraq. The city of Babylon was near the banks of the Euphrates River, a region that today is part of Iraq. As many caravans of different peoples passed through the region, the city received many religious, social, and cultural influences, and soon it grew in size and power. The city had water channels that flowed through it. This water supplied different needs of the population. Possibly, it was the world's largest city at its peak, besides having the famous Hanging Gardens, which were considered one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. With the accumulation of wealth, the Babylonians began to build statues, temples, and monuments deeply detailed. The structure of the Babylonian government was commanded by nobles of different dynasties and their religious leaders. The origin of the name Babylon is an adaptation of the Greek language. The original name comes from the Akkadian language, Babab, the translation of which would be the door of the gods. With King Hammurabi's ascension to the throne of Babylon, the city became even more important. Hammurabi was the sixth king of the Amorite dynasty, and under his reign, Babylon was strengthened, dominating territories that previously belonged to the Sumerian and Akkadian empires. Hammurabi conquered the major cities of Mesopotamia, including the cities of Ashur and Nineveh, thus creating the first Babylonian empire, called the Paleo-Babylonian Empire. He also created the famous Hammurabi Code, which was a set of laws and how to apply the equivalent punishment to the crimes committed. That code followed the principle of the Law of Talion, the famous eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. In the military area, the Babylonians perfected the Akkadian equipment with armor and helmets better adapted and adjusted to the soldiers' bodies. Hammurabi's empire lasted a short time, collapsing soon after his death in 1750 BC. As was to be expected, after his death, there were revolts from the other cities under Babylonian rule. This was a turbulent period in Mesopotamia, and Babylon was even plundered by the Hittites and then ruled by the Elamites. The city of Ashur, under the rule of the Babylonians, belonged to the Assyrians, a group of people of Semitic origin with a warlike society known to be cruel and ruthless in battle. The Assyrians probably assembled the first organized army in history. With standardized armor and already using iron in weapons and helmets, they were fearsome enemies. Their soldiers were trained and paid and served for periods established in contracts. They perfected the use of the war chariots. They were top-notch archers, besides having a deeply disciplined infantry. They were also known for developing siege weapons. Their major strength was the cavalry. Often, two riders rode the same horse. Usually the one who was riding behind carried a bow or darts to hit enemies at a distance. The Assyrians were known to be merciless to their captured enemies, torturing and humiliating the poor captives. With the demise of the Hammurabi Empire, the Assyrians took Babylon, the lands and cities of the Elamites and Hittites, and dominated even the great Egypt, thus consolidating, at the beginning of the Iron Age, the Neo-Assyrian Empire. Until then, it was the greatest empire in territorial extension ever created, surpassing even the empire of Sargon the Great. The capital of the Assyrian Empire was the city of Nineveh, which made major improvements to its walls to improve security against possible enemy attacks. The last great Assyrian king was Ashurbanipal, Asarhaddon's successor. It was Ashurbanipal who organized Nineveh's famous library, which even had 22,000 clay platelets with cuneiform writing. Thanks to it, today we know so much about the Mesopotamians. King Assyrian Ashurbanipal did not have a peaceful reign. His brother, who reigned in the city of Babylon, rebelled against him and allied with the nobles of Babylon and the nobles of Elamite cities. Ashurbanipal declared war on his brother and besieged Babylon. Noticing that he would have no chance of survival, the traitor brother set fire to his own palace, dying in the fire. Ashurbanipal then attacked the kingdom of the Elamites, where it destroyed the capital, the temples, and even the tombs were plundered. The Elamite princes were executed, and the ancient kingdom of Alam was extinguished. Ashurbanipal died in 627 BC, at about 58 years of age. His sons tried to keep the empire under control, but it soon went into decline, again due to the uprisings from many city-states. In Egypt, Pharaoh Necho II recovered the Egyptian lands under Assyrian control. In Mesopotamia, power was divided between the Chaldeans and the Medes, two Semitic tribes that were under Assyrian control. Nabal Palasar, who was a Chaldean nobleman, 
soon took over the reins of the Babylonian government. He knew how to take advantage of the power vacuum and prompted attacks against the cities of Nippur and Uruk, thus fortifying his position as king with lands under his command. Nabopolassar was a strong king with an expansionist profile. He established alliances with the Medes and the Persians. He married his son, Prince Nebuchadnezzar, to the daughter of the king of the Medes, Princess Amethyst. In 612 BC, Nabopolassar and his allies besieged the city of Nineveh, which still belonged to the Assyrians. The city was devastated, establishing the Second Babylonian Empire, called the Neo-Babylonian Empire. Its capital was again the city of Babylon. Nabopolassar died in 605 BC at 53, probably the victim of some disease. The name Nebuchadnezzar in Babylonian was written Nabu Kadur Uzer, which meant Nebo protects the crown. He was indeed a powerful king, and like his father, he wanted to conquer new lands and expand his domains. Babylon, already worn out by many years of invasions and plunder, was completely rebuilt under its reign, gaining a great wall around it. It was Nebuchadnezzar who had the hanging gardens of Babylon built, improving the water channel systems and building great temples and ziggurats, mostly dedicated to the god Marduk. Ziggurats were massive pyramid-shaped temples originally created by the Sumerians and later adopted by the Babylonians and Assyrians. The most famous of these ziggurats was Entenmenanki, who became well known as the Tower of Babel. Its construction was initiated by Nabopolassar, which may have reached an impressive 91 meters in height. The Great Ziggurat was overthrown by Alexander the Great when he conquered Babylon. Due to the dominance of territories and trade agreements, Babylon reached its peak. The city exuded wealth and power. Its fame and grandeur were exalted by authors of antiquity, among them the Greeks Herodotus and Tessius. But Nebuchadnezzar would not be satisfied with just sitting on his throne and ruling peacefully. In a short time, he searched for new lands to conquer. Near the Mediterranean Sea were the kingdoms of Israel and Judah. Nebuchadnezzar conquered the kingdom of Judah, apparently without much resistance, and took Jerusalem, at the time the capital of the Jewish people. The king of Judah, Jehoiakim, was taken as a prisoner to Babylon, along with many noblemen and a large number of Jerusalem citizens, especially those who had specific skills such as blacksmiths, masons, and painters. Among the captives was the biblical prophet Daniel, Daniel, who was part of the nobility of Judah, became Nebuchadnezzar's counselor, interpreting dreams and becoming respected in the royal court. Nebuchadnezzar left Jehoiakim's uncle Zedekiah in command of Jerusalem and the rest of its inhabitants. He went on to conquer the lands of the kingdom of Israel, which in turn was more powerful than the kingdom of Judah. Since the kingdom of Judah was so close to Egypt, the population was split. Some supported the Egyptians and the others supporting the Babylonian side. It was not long before a revolt broke out in Jerusalem, supported by the Egyptians, and Nebuchadnezzar was enraged. He besieged Jerusalem before the Egyptians could arrive. The city was decimated, the walls were destroyed, the temples and the palace were plundered. King Zedekiah was captured and blinded, imprisoned for the rest of his life. Again, several prisoners were captured to be taken to Babylon. This period has been recorded in the history of the Jews as the captivity of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar still fought against the Egyptians in the 30th year of his reign. Already over 60 years old, Nebuchadnezzar suffered from a mental illness. The reports of the time told it was something like lycanthropy, a disease where a person starts to behave wild and uncontrolled. He possibly even fled from Babylon and was found in the hills near the city, chewing grass like an ox. Nebuchadnezzar recovered from his madness, dying in 526 BC at about 72 years of age. The successors of Nebuchadnezzar did not reign for long. Nebuchadnezzar and his eldest son, Belshazzar, were the last Babylonian kings. Babylon was conquered by Cyrus the Great, the king of Persia. A curious fact is that the Persians entered the city of Babylon applauded by the people. They were welcomed as liberators from the oppressive government that Nabonidus exercised over his own people. The great Babylonian empire had come to an end, but its influence would still endure for many centuries in the peoples of Mesopotamia.